it's, it's about being a change maker. Okay, and so the reason why we have chosen to have these conversations and focus on these topics so far has been because we are, you know, fully aware that um, youth unemployment is an issue, that young people are looking at their options and we're trying to encourage people to consider the talents that they have and turning those into business ideas. Um, we've talked about how social entrepreneurship is about being innovative about social issues, about society's issues, environmental issues, and that if you do come up with a business model, that maybe that leads you towards social enterprise. But, you know, I'm a big advocate of the the unique selling points of social enterprise. What makes them really different from business is not whether they're for profit or not profit, but what they do with that profit. And also the culture that they can actually bring into the business world, you know, which is something that they're adding to the NGO sector as well. You know, that the NGO sector can learn just as much from social enterprise as business. Um, and that, you know, one of those things is that they're change makers. And I think in this region, I'm involved in um, a project, which is quite an exciting project, which is where part of the UN has recognized that social enterprises are uniquely positioned to be about interculturality, about linking people together that are different and making that a strength of their business and a strength of their networks. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I do really believe in is that social enterprise in this region can be about different people working together, um, real appreciation of diversity. And that's something that businesses across the world are crying out to understand as they become more international and global. So some really exciting global businesses, I believe, will come out of the social enterprise community you know, and start small with really good values. Now, we had a previous session about money, which didn't have any figures in it, because I'm, I'm trying to listen to people that, you know, money isn't their driving factor, but the case is it's still very important. We haven't shied away from having a conversation about profit all the way through, because profit gives you independence, it gives you the ability to invest, and it drives your whole business. And the thing that I'm going to talk about now is impact, because I believe that this is a way of generating social or environmental profit. You know, it's as important as money in a way. Um, we talk about the bottom line of the business and the top line. We talk about top line being vanity, the turnover. Bottom line being sanity, the profit. But the other two lines are your social impact and your environmental impact. And they are in becoming increasingly important. And it's going to be the social enterprise community that is the champion of why impact is important and, and that real change is different than just doing good things. Okay? I don't want to have an argument with uh, you know, NGOs that do really good work, but when, when it really matters is, is when those NGOs aren't needed anymore, when actually things have been improved. So this is about impact. But it's a new area of business. You know, it's not something that people have been doing for loads of years. So this is, you know, I'm not an expert in it. These aren't expert guidance. You as social entrepreneurs will take these, play with those, and you'll become the entrepreneurs and the, the experts and write the textbooks of the future for MBA programs. So why measure impact? Why be interested in it? Well, increasingly, stakeholders want impact for their money and their involvement. And so it is becoming a way of accessing finance, especially when everyone is asking for money. You know, if, if you more or less look the same, but you can show the impact you're going to actually deliver, then it turns the funding into an investment. It helps you ensure a well-run organization because you're focusing people like, like the very best profit-focused businesses are very well-run because that's what drives them. If you treat it like a profit, if you're impact-focused, you can achieve the same sort of drive as a very profit-driven business because where there's money, will come scrutiny. People will ask questions of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so if you're focused on impact, you'll always have an answer for them and it will always answer their question. So these sectors in, some, in this region in particular are not trusted. People can believe that people set up NGOs to do things, you know, under, under the radar. Where does the money go? How does it get spent? You know, the legal framework in Cyprus is still very underdeveloped. You know, it isn't as open as I'm used to in terms of sharing information and transparency. So being able to show that you are achieving an impact helps you with the scrutiny. It's another story that you can have 
We talked about networking being about stories, about marketing being about stories. These are conversations you'll be able to have about change. That's a different conversation than saying, I want to do some good, please give me some money for it. You should feel guilty about it. You should do it. You can say, I want to do this. If you put money into it and I do these things, this is what happens mm -hmm. and this is the impact. That's what I'm involving you in, a story of change. This area is going to grow. You know, I've seen it grow exponentially in the last five years and I've seen it arrive in the last 10 years. Okay, so it, people are really starting to focus now on impact. In the organizations that we work with in the UK, those that have been working for 10, 25 years, you know, that long, it's amazing that actually doing good for that long kind of loses its edge. Mm. You know, we're a fantastic organization, but actually, is it as exciting as it used to be? Mm. Could we be doing anything else? Could we actually change how we're working? So I'll tell you a couple of stories about organizations that have done that. So, and this phrase of fail forward towards really doing good. Those that don't measure impact very rarely ask the question whether their good is actually making, is it really worth doing? Is it really making a difference? So when you measure your impact, you realize that some of the things you're doing aren't working and you get the opportunity to change them. So they're like little failures that move you forward and then you're really doing good. And if you're really doing good, then you can actually achieve your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, NGOs and social enterprises tend to set visions which are about a fundamental change. Wouldn't it be nice if more of those actually achieved those changes they wanted to see and said, we're not needed anymore. We did eradicate poverty. We did drastically improve the openness and transparency around diversity in Cyprus. Rights really did improve. We can close up. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was that kind of change? Only a focus on whether you're achieving an impact will help you deliver that vision to conclusion. Okay? So, again, it's a very simple process for measuring impact, drawing on a lot of the traditional techniques, establish the purpose of why you're trying to measure the impact, what scope you're going to measure, and plan it out. Again, identify and understand the key stakeholders. They'll give you clues about what impact you could be measuring or how you could be measuring it. If people want to hear the message in numbers, then you'll have to find a way of measuring it as a number. If people want to hear you know, big words about change and stories, you're going to have to be producing films and stories and that sort of thing. But you'll only understand that by engaging the stakeholder, but we've shown how easy that can be. Identify the outcomes you plan to achieve and then work out some indicators. Okay, and nearly everything is measurable. Even though it can be hard to measure, nearly everything is measurable if you measure perhaps something different. One of the things that I learned a lot about hard to measure outcomes is, is if you really are making a change in someone's life, it's like they've learned to live their life a little bit better or differently. So you can establish a starting position of what they feel they know and an end position of what they now know and you can show the travel between the two. You can turn it into a number. So you can measure learning. Mm -hmm. And if you look for learning, there's like when we talked about change. Learning is a way of, you know, do you feel more confident? Did you learn to feel more confident through what we did? Yeah. You know? Design your data collection methods, then collect it, and then use it. You know, very good marketing material comes out of talking about your impact. I don't just mean glossy brochures, I mean really effective social media. I mean really effective, well-designed events. It doesn't have to be lots of spent on lots of glossy brochures. You know, a story, uh, what they say, a story tells a thousand words. Mm -hmm. You know, a really good YouTube interview with a group of your service users, how much does that cost these days? Yeah. You know, compared to these very glossy brochures that big companies produce about how well they've done and how much money they didn't give to developing countries or whatever. Bish bash bosh, your purpose plus the outputs of what you do leads to an income, an outcome. All that together is the impact. Okay? The funny thing about measuring impact is, as I've said, you might have a really good purpose. You might do really good things. They might have good outcomes. Doesn't necessarily mean the impact is positive. That can be a really big conundrum when you realize that you want to help people. Um, we were in uh, Limassol the other day, and a really nice idea was free food for people that need it at the moment. Nice purpose. Help people who can't afford food. D 
deliver free food, outcome, people fed. Mm -hmm. What happens if that's for five years? What's the impact of that? What could it be? Is it empowering to become dependent on something? Perhaps not. Mm -hmm. So sometimes impact is not positive. So if you just focus on the outcome, you might miss something. You should be intrigued by what impact are we really having. If you look at the impact of a lot of international development, look at the Palestinian refugees, for example, you're talking about 40-odd years' worth of support. What does that do to somebody? What does that do to their creativity, their entrepreneurial spirit, children who've grown up in that environment? You know, the impact is actually more negative than the positive purpose output outcomes. So you need to learn words of change and build this into your planning. Things to describe your aims, things like to enable, to increase something, to improve it, to maintain it. And also to describe your objectives. We will provide, we will support, we will offer, we will manage. And you'll have a debate about which of these are relevant and that will colour what type of things that you do. Okay? With all these things there's something that the British call jargon. You know, words that mean something only to the people in this space. But this is a communication challenge, communicating your impact. So you need to use words that people do understand related to impact and change and see how what you do can be translated into those sorts of words. And you have the other challenge of translating that into Greek or Turkish, you know, and whether your culture actually uses this sort of language or not. You might find that English is a good way of describing your impact. Or maybe Greek is better because of the, you know, but it's, it's a, a process you need to go through as a group as to how best to describe what you're trying to do and how best to describe how you're doing it. So social impact. Newton said that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. And we brought that up in the change session about if you don't push through the resistance, it will cancel you out. And if it can cancel you out hard enough, it might push you backwards, so you end up in a worse position than when you started. Especially in areas of discrimination and things like that, you can get a, you can get a backlash, which actually causes more damage. So social impact, though, is when the action disrupts the status quo and changes the situation. We are not just about, if we go backwards, about pushing and challenging doing good and jabbing things. Social entrepreneurship and social impact is about being disruptive, changing status quo, changing the situation. It's a huge risk to do that because you don't know where it's then going to roll. But this is why I think it's exciting for young people to be involved because you are in effect permitted to say the status quo is not any good. Is there need to mention uh, when we are talking about impact this positive or negative because that's, that's yeah. the challenge because impact it's not as you said always positive it can mm. be negative so that's a real challenge of pushing and I changing think, things and this is why it's so important this is a real ethical dilemma for social entrepreneurs you know be careful what you wish for think about how you're jabbing be prepared that you know you may have to take responsibility for the impact you have to take responsibility mm. for the impact of what you do and that that might not be just you saying well when we achieve this we'll be winning awards what happens if there is negative impact? Mm. You need to be ready for that. You know, you you guys are going to need just as good public relations training as the yeah. as politicians. You know, to be able to potentially defend what you've done. You know, and you can see this happening around the world now, where demonstrations go too far, for example, mm. and the original demonstrators having to explain, well, we didn't really support that idea, da da da, but did they think about that? Could be the impact of what happens. Yeah. You know, what's the impact of the of the Arab awakening? You know, for the young people that I've spoken to, it's not quite the impact they were expecting. They've in effect enabled a power shift, mm. but not a power complete revolution. And we can talk about Syria as well. We can talk about Syria, you know. Yeah. And that's a really good example, I think, of where you're getting people push and then people push back and... Mm. Some of what the opposition is saying is sound, but what happens if they choose their output is to use chemical weapons? I mean, the impact of that, you know, it's... And because impact can take a long time, you know, a challenge like yours is a generational challenge, probably. Mm. You can't expect to change people's prejudices overnight. So your impact is going to be delivered over a long period of time. Think of all the other things that could happen in that time. 
So this is, I think, a, a real discussion point that social entrepreneurs talk about now. Action, therefore, will have an immediate outcome for certain people, but it can also have a far more reaching effect on people, organisations, institutions and other things, not directly engaged with the actions, and that's also impact. I have to take responsibility for some of the things that I've done where I feel that I have improved the situation, but because other NGOs have not been quick enough to change, they've suffered. You know, you can try and improve a funding mechanism and those that really get it benefit from it. Those that resist it, waste that time resisting it, are then out of position. Everything I was doing was positive, but it has had some negative impact. I have to take responsibility for yeah. that. Okay, so you have to really think quite broadly about what is the wider effect you're having on other people. Now, one of the things that I think is quite interesting, we talk a lot about, you know, whether we like profit or not. Um, a lot of people campaign for social enterprises. They shouldn't have to pay tax. Um, but actually, as I've come to learn in this country, you know, collecting tax in a country like this is difficult anyway. So actually to take the social enterprises out of the tax system might have a negative impact on the whole economy because then you've got another part of the business community not paying tax. Whereas in the UK, there's massive tax breaks. You know, and the big companies are the ones that are avoiding tax. <coughs> but, you know, it, it, one size doesn't fit all. Similarly, as all small businesses, it's up to you where your money actually goes. And actually keeping your money in the local economy and choosing local suppliers, and choosing local suppliers that choose local suppliers, means that you could actually be achieving a local economic impact that you're missing. And you can talk about that. And actually, in the early days of your business, before you're able to show your social impact, you might be able to show your economic impact much sooner. So don't miss that opportunity to do so. And that may enable you to compete with other commercial businesses that are buying their produce from Greece, or buying it from other parts of the EU, for example. Because you can show that your local economic impact is actually greater than a company that's bigger than yours. Mm -hmm. So involve your stakeholders. Really listen to them and develop your theory. And by that I mean a story about if we do this, this is what's going to happen and this is what we think the impact will be. In a, people call that the theory of the change that you're going to try and achieve. Or an impact plan. Because I'm saying now, plan your impact, measure the impact, be transparent, then you will have an impact plan. Mm. That should be integral to your business plan. Okay, a bank doesn't understand it, but you're now part of a different part of the economy. Mm. It should be in there with your marketing plan. So this is a visual way of showing it. Some little guy watering some plants. So as you can see, he's putting in some inputs. What do you need to do? to get this business off the ground and get going. Then you're going to do some things, some activity, some first changes. Okay, so you've got your startup phase and then you're going to start doing some stuff. That will lead to you doing some outputs in the short to medium term. Training sessions, people achieving certificates, mm -hmm. producing some art, selling that art. That will lead to some outcomes in the short to medium term. You need to work out what's the link between your output and outcome. Mm -hmm. How do you know there's a link and how are you going to measure it? Now you're measuring your outcomes. Mm -hmm. The link between your output and outcomes. Your vision is the impact you want to see. That's the long-term change you want to see. Okay? So every organisation is already doing visioning and things like that. But in effect, that's the impact you want to achieve. So you need to know whether the impact you're achieving is anywhere near the vision that you've set out to achieve. Now you know what your vision should be now, so you can work that back and work out what the impact is. And is there a link? How will you know what the link is between your outcomes and your impact? How will you know when your vision is being realised? You might not be able to measure that now, if so say so, and work out when you are going to be. That's a huge risk. Think, I'm not going to be able to even know whether I'm having an impact for 10 years. And then what happens if the impact's negative? You know? So this is, as a visual thing, as a, as a team, if you were to just put that on the wall and use post-it notes, you could build up your theory of change and how you were going to measure your impact just on a page 
in a process and walk a funder through it, walk a stakeholder through it. Let me introduce you to my business. This is what I'm looking for. I need £40,000. I need to get a space at the co-working space. I need some IT. I need to produce some training modules. Then I'm going to work with Youth Power. I'm going to deliver some of these training modules and we're going to get initial feedback and we're going to refine what we're doing. What I'm looking for is five entrepreneurs a year to be coming out, five new businesses created. The outcome of that is going to be half a million pound generated for the Cypriot economy. What is the link? Well, I want those half a million to be the five that I've supported. How will I know? I'll ask them. I'll be able to measure. They've agreed to show me their accounts. What's the impact? Cyprus becomes a sustainable economy that creates lots of jobs in 15 years. How will I know? Well, I'll have to keep in touch. Okay, I have a question. Yeah? Uh, can, can a person just uh, know the impact or, or think about, for example, we know that you have to set up a goal mm -hmm. or a vision for your plan and then put the plan Absolutely. to get to the impact? Yeah, you can go backwards. In fact, that's the best way of doing it, really. Because then you're asking yourself a fundamental question. If this vision is so important to me, mm. I'm going to keep rethinking that until I've got the right, most efficient way of doing it. Okay. You know, maybe if I really want to achieve that impact, producing training programs isn't the best way to do it. Yeah. Maybe it's to create a fund that will actually fund five businesses a year. Same vision, same outcome, yeah. but different down this end. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, how often have you been in a situation where you actually had to walk people through it and make a presentation? Tons. 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 Investors mm -hmm. will say, if you want me to give you a discount mm -hmm. on the interest rate, you tell me what social impact I'm going to get that I can weigh up against the fact that I've lost 2% financial return, but I am gaining a social return of some sort. Make me feel good inside. Yeah. I can explain it to my shareholders because they just want money. Yeah. They would be interested. A member of staff, who you want to really believe in what you're doing, you need them to buy into this. This is why you're, here, is why you're coming to work for us. This is how it works. If you've got a way of helping us do it better, brilliant. But if you also don't agree with this way of working, you're not going to fit here. Yeah. So I've used it with staff before. I've also used it where you are trying to build relationships with people for people that are interested in working with high impact organizations. They know the change they're trying to achieve. I would say that for starters, you have to uh, either find an environment or put yourself in an environment where these kind of people that you want to influence are correct mm -hmm. yeah I think also I've been in situations where people just haven't been able to answer these questions yeah including funders yeah mm. you know I've got five million pounds to spend what are you trying to achieve not really sure we've been doing it for too long we kind of lost focus mm -hmm. that, that's what's scary about this background you know I mean I'm four years into into NGO world and I, I trying to see <laughs> how many of NGOs that I know got through this process, I mean, in a way, uh, to connect vision with the impact that they are making, because there is, there is so much of turnings mm. on this process. Okay, there is certain impacts, but n none of the time close to vision, mm. vision and what they were stating. So I see, like, so many wrong turns on this diagram as well. It's not kind of set the road I mean if you want to speed it up so to make it uh, applicable to what you want to do and what you want to impact then again you can make mistakes yeah if you want to uh, extend it to make it sure that you are doing it proper way setting indicators stuff and things monitoring and again then social changes are happening much faster than so it should be kind of flexible model uh, that can adopt all this. All I also think what this doesn't show is that if you do this really well, a lot of organizations will realize that the impact they're trying to achieve, they will not be able to establish these links mm -hmm. based on their own, only their input. Mm -hmm. 
and it encourages people to realize that the impacts that we're aiming for, the changes that we're trying to see, are actually systemic. They rely on many more people being on the same page, which I think is very positive because it leads people towards collaboration. And actually, if you look at the NGO world again, there's not full of collaboration because they're all aiming for something good, but they don't see that actually the impact they could share with other people. If you look at what the UN is trying to do around eradicating world poverty, that's the impact. But all the NGOs sort of come at it from different directions, whereas the, the social entrepreneurs, there's some good videos online about the social entrepreneurs, start from the position of we've identified all these inputs that other people are putting in, and our contribution is partly trying to fit into actually helping them work together. We're providing them a platform to actually maximize their activities and outputs to, create, to firm up a link and actually achieve an outcome. You know, I think that's a, a key thing, I think, is that if you're really into impact, it's really unlikely that you'll be able to do it um, all yourself. For projects that take a, lo a long time, like years, is there a way to have, is there any checks to be sure that you're on the correct way, on the correct path for the impact you want to have? Yeah, if we did, a, we offered to do master classes on, on each of these if people are interested. And there are now emerging tools to give you that kind of mm -hmm. way of measuring, way of early checking and, yeah. and that sort of thing. And this isn't my area of specialism. And there are other people that I know in my network who are starting to become really interested in this and specialise down on. I mean, Cyprus 2015, for example, with their Peace Reconciliation Index, yes. in effect, that is one of these impact measurement tools. Mm -hmm. And when I first saw that, I saw the application of that much broader than perhaps people had seen it who were just interested in Cyprus because if it can really show whether or not a community is about to have some kind of friction, that could be applied to a, a much wider range of communities than just Cyprus. And what my challenge was to them was, is what if a funder started to use this to decide who, which, money, which NGO they gave money to? You know, is the NGO community in Cyprus 100% behind this tool? Because it would be totally logical for a funder to say, okay, if this is robust, we will use it to guide our money because we want our money to go where it makes the biggest difference. And that's why I said before, the impact of that sort of thing would potentially put some NGOs under enormous scrutiny because they haven't been thinking over the last few years about whether they're creating a big enough impact. So these things, this is what I mean about even the tools of measuring social impact are disruptive. If you're really about change. Mm -hmm. with, the, with my previous comments, I just wanted to state, you know, uh, clearly that it's important uh, for the entrepreneur to be in the sort of environments that they want to influence, and that they can find a pool of people that are willing to work with them and to be influenced mm -hmm. by their ideas, because um, there's no point in doing something in the wrong kind of environment. No, I think that's what get you anyway. You should follow something that's you, you're passionate about to be able to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah. It's really gonna to matter to you, I think. What do you mean? To be a social entrepreneur, you can't just choose any change. Yeah, sure. It's got to mean something to you. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. But uh, perhaps that change you want to influence uh, is, is happening in another country, for example, in another place in the world, instead of uh, where you're based. So yeah, that's an interesting point. You know, actually, is whether um, placement is important. Yeah, and and it's something that in the UK we a number of people that I've worked with the last few years have asked this question: Will social entrepreneurs move, or are they very drawn to issues in their community? Now, I was mentioning before that you know there's no reason why Cyprus can't develop products and services that would be available internationally. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. actually the product going international. It's a really interesting question about whether social entrepreneurs will go where it's easiest you know where they they think i want to do something in this issue but actually if i start in my home country it's such an upward journey i could make a real imp an impact quicker if i went to the uk where there's already been developments for example but i think you also need some entrepreneurs who really do want to work with actually hard that's my personal view um there's a lot of issues out there to get our teeth into. <laughs> Any more questions? I mean, to just give you an example of an organisation that um, 
I worked with just to sum up and I, I met them um, can't go backwards for someone no reason oh yes I can um, I met them in about 2006 and they specialized in uh, I'll just leave it there. they specialized in learning and training for prisoners for a long time and they decided that they wanted to really change how they worked they wanted to really see whether they could affect why people came out of prison and then went back to prison. A bit like that youth organisation that I was talking about where they, they questioned, they were good at doing the training but it wasn't really leading to a big change. And they got a, a big injection of money, about £500,000, to design and redesign their, their, their approach and to plan to grow that over a 10 year period to when it could actually achieve the kind of breakthrough impact. And the challenge for them was, is they realized that to achieve the big impact would actually to be to change the justice system in the whole country. They wouldn't get the opportunity to do it all themselves. They'd have to change the government's approach. And then, almost overnight, the government would change the way they work with offenders and, and things would just, and they, they would be sustainable, but it was a big risk for them because there's no guarantee they'll still be in business. And when I first met them, they, they were developing this program and they were selling it directly to prisons to try and pilot it. And they were also trying to get local authorities to buy the service from them. And they did it for about two or three years and they just thought, it's just too hard. It's like, this works, but people aren't buying it. Mm -hmm. And so they pulled away from that strategy. And another year later, they were involved in a government program, which was actually about a new funding mechanism to provide a service for prisoners that are on low level crimes and they do a number of things. When the prisoner comes out of prison, someone meets them at the gate and they've already met that person several times in the prison and got to know them. And that person has probably been a prisoner and they will have been trained in prison to be a mentor of prisoners. So this, these people can empathize with each other very quickly. But the point was, is if you don't meet the prisoner at the gate, there's lots of opportunity for that person to go on a different course, to get drunk for the first time in six months, to go and see their wife and that might not be the best conversation, to re-establish themselves with their family, to be tempted by people that are waiting for them outside the gates for the money they owe or whatever like that. So they basically try and enable this person to have the most normal five days possible. Roof over your head, decent wash, maybe a beer, but in company, get your benefits sorted, da 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 da, and someone to talk to that you trust or whatever, help to get some interviews, just this support, and it is enough to reduce the number of people going back to prison by a massive amount. Now, because it's enough to reduce by a massive amount, the government was interested because when you scaled that up, the problem in the country is worth 10 billion pounds. By doing this pilot in one area, the government could see that it worked, mm -hmm. could see the opportunity was £10 billion saving, and they're changing the law. Mm. They're changing the way probation happens in the UK. They're changing the way that they interact with prisoners when they come out. They're rolling out this approach of training prisoners to be mentors, giving them a qualification. 70% of the people that work for this organisation, which was an NGO, which became a social enterprise of selling its services to the state rather than donations, are, of previous offenders mm -hmm. and they'll do it they'll achieve their impact some of the negative impacts some of the NGO programs that don't work will stop a lot of the probation officers that have been doing it the same way for 50 years will lose their jobs mm -hmm. but the country could save a massive chunk of money mm -hmm. and people could actually get rehabilitated in prison which is the original point now, this was the first NGO that I'd seen go from NGO to social enterprise and do the impact thing. And I think they're awesome. And that change was about 10 years. And the impact was not just theirs. The impact will be delivered when it becomes a revolution across the whole thing. And that requires an immense group of people to be involved, a special type of investor, a social entrepreneur that really gets it, a team that really believes in it, and a route map like that. I think it's awesome. Uh, what What's the key issues here? I think is that the government wants to help the NGO 
I mean, they don't. The, they want the same thing. So, mm. but for other NGOs that trying to change how the government is acting, that's not possible. Yeah, that is an issue.